Hi, I'm Tim Nicholas, and I own Wooden Whimsies. My wife Tracy and I, we run the business, and we make all types of pen turning equipment. Uh, we buy it from Taiwan and resell it on our internet website, Wooden Whimsies. And we've had a lot of people who are kind of discouraged from turning Tracy's inlay blanks. So today what I want to go through is some of the things that will help you out and teach you how to put these things together. Uh, glue them up correctly and also the correct tools to use and we're going to get into how to use a skew. We're going to cut a straight line on a skew. We're not going to worry about beads and coves and round overs and such forth. We're just going to cut a straight line with that skew which is once you learn how to do it, which take you five minutes to figure it out, it's very simple. Alright, when you buy your blank from Wooden Whimsies, it's going to come in a plastic clamshell like this and you're going to get this thing in the mail and you're going to be very excited and want to get it turned but something you need to be very aware of and as when you open this package make sure when you open it you are in a clean dust particle free area lay yourself out a paper towel or do it on a white kitchen counter whatever you want to do it when you open this box you open it very carefully remove your blank and the way Tracy does these all the pieces pieces of parts are already installed in there take a look at it and make sure that all the parts are still in there if they're not, check your box and your packaging. It's in there somewhere. If it's not, then it fell on your clean area here. If you open this out in your shop where you've got dirt and crap and sawdust and stuff everywhere, chances are one of these little pieces, that are, some of them are no bigger than the size of dust particles, are going to fall down into to your area and you're not going to be able to find it. You'll be calling us on the phone telling it we messed and lift you out a piece. But anyway, when you get this, it's going to have a set of instructions in it that uh, give you some tips and hints on how to, uh, how to prepare and turn the blank. A lot of the blanks Tracy does, she also has a piece of paper installed in here already. And what that does is hold the pieces out a little bit. So when you can take your tube and you get ready to put your tube in, you just push through, push the paper out with the tube and it's, it's just put it in and it comes out. I'm not going to get into that right now, but there you go. Now, there's another blank that she has that are already put together. And with these, if you can zero in on that, inside that tube, or inside the blank, there's a black tube already installed in there. And basically it's, all, it's just the same thing, all the little parts and pieces are there, look at it, make sure that there's no pieces missing, and then you've got all that you need. There again, it comes with a set of instructions, give you little hints and tips on how to put it together, and also, with this blank. There's a little note in here that tells you that there's a black tube already installed in it. You will not need to use the tube from the uh, from the kit. Okay. Alright, some of the stuff that you're going to need to turn this blank and be successful with it and make sure you get all the stuff out that you need before you start and have it all on hand, you're going to need some paper towels. The paper towels are going to be used for uh, applying the CA glue. Alright, speaking of CA glue, you need thin CA glue, either medium or thick CA glue, and you need some sort of activator. All right, we use Stickfast, that's what we sell on our site. We, we, we're sold on it, that's what we like, and we feel that it's a very good quality product. So that's what we carry and what we recommend. Uh, next product we highly recommend you use is a product called Micromesh. And it, what it is basically is cloth back sandpaper it comes in nine different grits starting at 1500 which is about an equal to uh, 400 grit regular sandpaper and then it goes all the way up through 12,000 which uh, pretty much feels like a plastic bag that's been glued to a piece of cloth it's very fine and th for this product when you get through using it your your blank is going to pretty much look like glass you'll need to do nothing else to it when you finish using this okay. another product we recommend you have for this blank it's called Abernet. This is 400 grit Abernet and it's going to be used to uh, do the rough sanding on your CA finish when we get through turning it. You'll need a set of bushings. These bushings here are the PKGABU, they're Penn State's Gatsby bushings. You can also use the Monet bushings, um, Sierra bushings, uh, Mesa bushings. They're all the same pen, and they all use the same bushings. So if you have a, a set of bushings for a Sierra pen, you can use it perfectly well with this kit. Important, important, important. 
safety glasses. Make sure you always wear your safety glasses when you're turning. A little bit of this, you think there's not, no problem, but you get a piece of that wood that flies off that lathe at 100 miles an hour and hits you in the eye, you'll wish you had these on. Okay. All right, you're going to need a skew chisel to turn this blank. Uh, that's what I recommend you use. Uh, you can use a uh, fingernail gouge, something like that, as long as you can get a nice smooth finish on it, but I highly recommend you use a, uh, the skew chisel. There are four different chisels here. Each one of them has a specific use, but uh, uh, for turn the purposes of turning our blank today, we're going to be using the three-quarter inch skew. Um, when you buy a skew, these, these two skews here are, are, um, are rounded. When you lay them onto your tool rest and you want to, to do, if you're going to do beads and coves and rollovers, then this is very helpful because you can roll the chisel without having to hold it up. It holds itself up. Uh, don't get a skew that is too small like this one. Uh, the skew we'll get into a little bit later but it's there's a very on this the smaller the skew the harder it is to learn how to use so if you want you're learning to use a skew you want to get a big one this is a one inch uh, uh, skew here and this one here is even bigger this is an inch and an eighth this is uh, made by uh, crown I believe but you're learning to use a skew bigger is better because your sweet spot is a bigger area to hit just like if you if you're a golfer the sweet spot on that golf club is the bigger your club the bigger the sweet spot the easier it is to hit a straight ball same with these here the bigger the sweet spot the easier it is to keep it steady on the blank all right and last but not least you need your handy dandy lathe this one today we're going to do is going to be called doing what's called turning between centers you're not going to use a mandrel you only have one blank to turn so what we're going to use here is on the one end over here is a tool called a dead center. This does not turn. When you mount it into the head of the lathe, when the head of the lathe turns, this turns with it. That will be the, the a friction that, that will into your bushings there that will cause your bushings and your, your blank to turn. On the other end, you can use a dead center. This just spins freely. So all your power is here and this follows. Okay. All right. At this point, we're going to do, we're going to glue up our blank. Open our little package here, make sure we're in our nice clean area. We don't have a bunch of dust particles and uh, sawdust and things laying around where things can get lost and confused. All right. If you're like most people, you'll probably take the instructions and kind of glance over them and say, yeah, yeah, whatever. And you'll set those aside. And you read your little note here that tells you that you got your black tubes already installed. Okay. So we know that's, that's half our battle already done. The tube's in there. And... The blank is already assembled for you. So this is very simple. What you're gonna do, make sure you look in the ends here. Uh, look at your image on the blank. Make sure that you got the, your distance there and where you want this thing to, to wind up on your blank. If you want it up high, then you need to make sure that you push the tube inside down low. If you want it the other way, you can go the other opposite direction. But I like to kind of center my stuff up. So what I do is go to the, on the ends and I'll look where I set my tube in there make sure that it's centered where I want it and then I'm going to start with the thin CA alright we we'll take the thin CA leave the blank just as it is with all the rubber bands on it you said I was going to make sure that you've got all your parts are already installed in there if you're missing a part out of here and you left it in the box you put this glue on here and get this thing set up and then just as you're turning you remove the rubber bands and you realize you're missing a part it's too late you might as well throw it in the trash and get another one. So make sure all your parts are there before you put glue on. So we'll start, we'll put a little glue on here, thin CA, just a bit, and we're going to, what we're going to be doing is dropping that CA glue into all the little cracks around the edges of these pieces here. Just like that. If you think you got enough, don't put too much all at one time. It just rolls over and comes out of the bottom. You just get a, a puddle on your, your work area here. But now you're going to let that set up for a few minutes and let that dry. Okay. All right, we got our first coat on there. It's had a little, uh, about a minute and a half or so to set up. The glue is dry. At this point, I don't want to use any accelerator yet because if you do, what happens is accelerator sometimes will cause your CA to boil and that CA will boil up in between these cracks of this blank 
you may not notice it at first, but when you get through turning it and you get to put your, uh, your shine and your polish on there, you're going to see white lines in between there, which are not going to be very attractive because you let your foam in there. So let it dry naturally. Give it a, give it a couple minutes. It doesn't take long and it'll dry. Now, what we're going to do is we put another coat on. There again, if you can make sure you can see this, go in between all the little cracks there and fill it all in and set it down and you're going to let it dry one more time. Okay. okay, our third application, this time we're going to put the CA glue on and now we're going to hit it with a little bit of accelerator. If you don't like to have your fingers glued to the blank, which I don't, but I've been used to peeling my fingers off these things for years, so it doesn't really bother me. Uh, you can put on some rubber gloves, and when you peel all, you'll get your little rubber gloves stuck to there instead of your fingers. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a third coat on here. And by coat, I mean we're putting it into the, into the cracks of the, of the blank again in between all the pieces. Make sure we fill it all in. And this time we're going to take some accelerator. Make sure each time you use your accelerator, you shake it up good. All right? And then just, just give it a little tiny squirt. You don't have to pour a whole bunch to it. In fact, that's bad to put a whole bunch to it. It foams up on you. So just put a little bit on there. It sets up almost instantaneously. And you continue on. Keep applying glue. Just like that. And then hit it with the, see it, with the accelerator. More glue. More accelerator. And what we're going to do is we're going to build this up. So we want to fill all those cracks in. Make sure they're all filled up with glue. The first two coats that we put on, we didn't put any accelerator. We want everything to soak in so that the blank would be glued to the tube real well. So just continue on. I don't know. There's no set number of how many to put on. It all depends on uh, the blank. And some of the blanks that Tracy does, they go all the way around. So uh, what I do is I do one side, and I'll flip it over. Then I do the other side, and so on. But I just keep going to that. Keep putting the glue to it. Hit it with the accelerator. Like I said, each time you use the accelerator, make sure you shake it up. Okay. There's some of the accelerator, accelerator has some uh, stuff in it if you don't keep it stirred up inside there. If you leave that can set like that for a, a few minutes, you pick it up and use it, whatever the stuff is in there. I'm not, I'm not a chemist. I don't know what it is. Whatever the stuff is in there, it'll cause your nozzle to clog. So make sure you keep it shaken up. And when I store my accelerator, I leave, always leave the cans laying on their sides. All right, now we've got our blank here. It's all glued up, ready to go. We've got to get rid of this excess wood on the end between the end of the blank and where the top of the tube is there. On some of these, uh, like the Gatsby pens, they uh, require um, uh, the, the click type, that tube that's in there. You have to make sure that you open up your kit measure the length of that tube when you finish sanding this this should be the exact same length as that tube that came in your kit if it's too long or too short then your mechanism that clicks inside will not throw or be not enough distance to throw or if you click it and it does throw your, your pen tip may not come out at the end far enough the uh, the length of those tubes are absolutely critical so just make sure before you do this you measure the tube that came with your kit and when you sand this down, you make sure that this is the exact same length. All right, the particular kit that I'm using today to put this together, uh, the tube length is not, doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do is just, just sand it down until we get to the end of the tube on each end, and we'll be done. So what you're going to need is your sander. This is a T-square with a um, uh, uh, universal... Uh, sanding apparatus. I got this from Penn State Industries. It's uh, uh, they're they're not that expensive. It's all it is. Pretty much all it is is a uh, uh, a little piece of angle iron with another piece of angle iron bolted to it with a post stick. You know, you, you can make these pretty much pretty easy if if you've got access to angle iron. Uh, what you do is your your sleeve that you need a a sleeve. To adapt that tube inside to this seven millimeter post here. So we'll slide our adapter on there, slide our tube on. Now that keeps us square to the sanding surface. All right, we'll turn on our sander. 
what I do as I'm doing this, I'll let it stand and then I'll turn the blank as it's going. That way I'm ensuring I'm getting a, a nice square 90 degree surface. Right off, open it up. Look in the end, we're getting closer. And the spin. Close enough. We're just barely starting to touch the brass there, so that's enough. That if you're doing a click pen and you stand into that brass too much, your blank's going to be too short and your clicker in your pen is not going to work properly. Just about got it there. Couple more spins. You're good to go. That's close enough. All right, now we got our blank all sanded up and squared up on the ends. What we need to do now is, is take care of the, the fuzzies and the burrs that might be on the end of our blank. For that, you're going to use a countersink tool here. I got this, I think, at Harbor Freight for, I don't know, probably 7 or $8. They don't cost that much. All it is is a countersink bit that's mounted on a screwdriver handle. We'll put that into the end of the blank and just kind of give it a quick twist. That's enough and that shines up the inside edge of that tube, takes that sharp edge off there. What that good does for us is we get ready to put our pen together and we, we press in our parts together, we don't have a rolled over edge on there that we're fighting with trying to press parts in against that because it'll uh, sometimes they'll bind up and you'll end up mashing your parts or breaking your blank. So just do that, give it a quick twist on both ends of the blank and you'll see our nice shiny brass on the inside edge there all the way around and we're good to go. All right, we're going to mount our blank on our lathe. Like you said, we're going to use, we're going to be turning between centers. So we have a dead center and a live center. Uh, Ryan, can you hand me those bushings over there, please? Thank you. So when we do this, we set this up. We we'll take our bushings. You can see these bushings. I've used them several times. They've got a little bit of a glue buildup on them, but that's okay. I'll show you how to get that off here in a little while. Uh, so just put one bushing to your dead center here. Put your blank inside of it. Put the blank on the other side, just like that. Everything's kind of floppy at this point. Bring your tailstock up until everything kind of sets together. And lock your tailstock down. Boom. Now, turn your uh, handle on the back of your tailstock just snug. You don't want to crank this thing down. You'll just end up bending and breaking things. So just snug and lock the tailstock down like that. Move your tool rest into place. One thing about the tool rest, uh, if you're going to be using a skew with this tool uh, on the tool rest here, which we're going to be doing today, if you have a new lathe, this tool rest comes with a pretty rough edge on it. So you want to do before you actually use this tool rest is take it over to your sander or you can use sandpaper or a hand palm sander, whatever you want to do use but you got to get that factory pretty factory paint off there and uh, get all the the little bumpies that there are sometimes on there when this thing comes from the factory if you don't when you're trying to use your skew it's going to be hanging up and every time your skew hangs up you're going to get a little divot in your blank we don't want that so make sure that you got a nice smooth surface on your tool rest so we're going to slide this into place here we're going to be close enough to where we're not touching anything but not so close that you know we're binding up anything. So turn your head of your lathe before you turn it on. Make sure that it's all going to, to work there. Make sure you it in. Okay. And when I turn on the lathe, uh, this particular lathe, you'll zoom in down here, Ryan. Uh, this is a variable speed lathe. Uh, the way I have it set up here right now, I'm pretty much in the, uh, uh, I think I'm on the second, um, uh, belt setting inside. So my slow speed in this lathe will be 580 RPM and my fast speed will be 1800. I never turn hardly anything that I can think, nothing I can think of over 1800. So that's going to be plenty of speed. So we'll turn on your lathe, turn your speed up as high as it'll go. 
If you have a lathe where you got to be changing out belts, you want to set it at about 1800. All right, take your skew. Here we go into how to use the skew. All right, just about every tool in your arsenal, what I like to, I've heard it referred to as the ABCs of using the skew. The skew. Okay, one is your approach, A. You're going to set your skew on your tool rest. That's your approach. Okay, now, on this skew here, this, this flat edge that's on each side, it's called a bevel. What we're going to do, we're using the skew, and it's absolutely essential that you do this, it's called riding the bevel. If you get this up too high, what happens is it's going to dig in and you're going to have pieces all over the shop. It's just ruined. So we're going to ride the bevel. And the way we do that, like I said, A, approach. B, we're going to come down until the back of the chisel. I'm not cutting anything at all right now. The back of that chisel is touching the blank. This, in other words, right back here is touching the blank. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to raise the chisel until it just starts to cut. That's the C, cut. Approach, bevel, and then we're going to raise up, cut. A, B, C. I'm going to get those rubber bands off there first. You just cut right away. I'm going to have to tighten up my lady here. There we go. A, C, C. Just till it starts to cut. And you see the little strings that are coming off there. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see great big huge chunks and uh, uh, boar hog pieces flying off of it. You just want to see little, little pieces like that. A, B, C. Very simple. Now, you notice that I'm not cutting all the way up to this end of the blank, and there's a reason for that. You never, ever cut into your blank from the end, from outside in. If I did that, what would happen, that would stand a chance of a, a piece of this blank chunking out of there and flying off. If I do that, I could probably, since my area is fairly clean, I could probably find it and put it back in there, but I don't want to have to do that. So let's not even go there to start with. Right, back or lay it on. Now what I'm going to do, turn the chisel over. We're going to use the other side and go to the right. Same thing. A, B, C. Come off the end of the blank. Once you get used to using this for a while, you won't have to be so deliberate with A, B, and C. You'll just be able to get right on it and cut. You'll, you'll have a feel for it and you'll know where your sweet spot is. All right, three areas of this chisel. This is called the heel. The top of it is called the toe. And the area in between is the sweet spot. You don't want to cut down here at the bottom on the heel. That just gives you lines in there. If you cut, try to cut like this, and you get that toe into that blank, it's going to catch, and you'll have a chunk of your blank coming out. So stay away from that. In fact, I've seen a lot of people, when they sharpen these things, the top of the, the chisel, the, the toe of the chisel, will actually be rounded over, so there's less of a chance of catching it. So just cut, take little small bites, just like that. Still getting little bitty small little little pigtail curly cues coming off of there. That's what you want. And we're gonna cut it down until we almost get to the bushing. And then I'm gonna show you something, a little trick there. Alright, we got our bike cut down to almost where we want it. This skew does such a good job of cutting this, you, can, uh, you can't really see it in the video, but I can rub my hand on here and I can feel this. This is very, very smooth. It, almost, it feels as if it's been sanded with four or 600 grit sandpaper. It's just that smooth. 
So there's, when you get finished with this, when using this tool, there'll be no need to sand the blank before you put your finish on. Now, what we want to do is we turn this thing down and we have maybe a fingernail of depth over the bushing on each end. I don't want to trim all the way down to the bushing because what happens when you do that is uh, now you have to make sure that you have your bushings are brand new and everything is perfect for your pen to be put together. If you'll do this next trick I'm going to show you, you'll never have a problem with your end pieces not having a nice smooth transition between the blank and the and the pen ends or the, the pen parts. So what we're going to do is I'm going to round this over just a little bit on the end there and to do that there again use your chisel A, B, C now when we get to the very end I'm going to do is just kind of roll that chisel into the end of that blank just just slightly not very much at all so it's kind of hard to talk and do it at the same time, so just can you see it all right? Okay, here we go. We're going to cut. We get the end, we're going to roll up just slightly. And what that does, it gives me a nice, a rounded over end right here to work with when I get ready to put my pen together. Speaking of getting that glue off there, what I do is I just take the toe of the chisel and I slide it along the bushing there and just with a fingernail I can pop that, that glue that glue that was on there comes right off. It's not important to get it off but I mean if you get a real big build up then you want to make sure you get that, a lot of that glue off there because it will throw off your your judgment as to how thick to make your blank here. Because if you got a whole bunch of build up on your, your bushing when you get finished your blank's going to be way too big. You won't know that until you get ready to put your pen together. So let me turn off the other end here you see, roll the chisel just slightly. Yeah. And you'll notice when I'm turning this, I keep my hand on the top of the chisel, either hold it on there like that or put my thumb on it, something. What's going to happen? Make sure that when, if I should get a, a slight chatter or something in there, that my chisel's not going to bounce up, come off of it, and then come back down on it and take a big chunk out of it. So just put some, it doesn't take much, you don't have to monkey fist it down, just a little bit of pressure on there, in fact one finger, and just enough to hold it in place. And then cut and just, just lift that chisel right on the end, just a tiny bit to get that round over effect there. Okay. got our area cleaned up now. I like to make sure that before I start putting my CA finish on that I don't have any stray dust particles laying around that could possibly get into my finish and uh, make it look bad. So, we'll start off. Loosen up your tool rest. Move it out of the way. Uh, give me the paper towels, please. Okay, we're going to start with a paper towel. Just like this. And I'll fold it in half. Fold it in half again, and I'm going to kind of roll it over into a little sixths or fifths or sixths there. I'm going to turn on my lathe. Zoom in down here. I'm going to turn the power all the way down as slow as the lathe will go. Because if I try to put this stuff on there when this thing's spinning at 1800 RPMs, I'm going to get a little bit of glue on the blank, and then I'm going to have glue all up on the wall and over the bench and everywhere. So turn the speed down. Turn on your lathe. You see your lathe is turning fairly slow. Right now, what is it here? We are at about 580 RPM here right now. Slow. If you can get your lathe a little slower than that, slower is better. Use our thin CA. And for this part of, the, of uh, the putting the finish on, we're going to do three coats of thin CA. There's uh, If you have a problem with getting this, this, the CA glue to go on to the blank, and not get your paper towel stuck on there. There's another line of products that Stick Fast sells, but uh, has that we also sell. It's called the CA Wood Finish, and it's pretty much the same stuff, only it has about a 40 second longer working time. So it's less chance of you getting your, your, your towel stuck to the blank. So with the turning as slow as it goes, do not put the glue onto the blank. If you do that, what's going to happen is the CA glue is going to run down in between your blank and your bushing, and you're not going to get it off. Okay? You'll just you'll get it off, but you're going to ruin everything in the process. 
So put your CA glue onto the paper towel, just a little dab like that, and rub it onto the blank. Just like that. That's it. Take your accelerator while the lathe is still on. Give it a quick shot of accelerator. It's done. It's dry. Continue to the next step. A little bit on the paper towel. Apply it to the blank. Get off the blank before it starts setting up on you. A little quick square to CA or accelerator. And one more time with the thin. Get it on there. Get off. Little CA accelerator. And that's our first three coats. You can see we got a pretty, it's, it's getting pretty shiny on there. Um, if you like to light sand and just kind of buff that, you might be ready to go. I don't know, you'd have to try it. But uh, for what I do, I, I like to, to build my finish up a little bit, give it a little bit more uh, endurance there. All right, this time I'm going to use thick CA. You can use medium, that's fine. In fact, when I, with the way I do mine, I'll buy the thick. I'll take the lid off this bottle and I'll let this bottle sit on the counter for a couple of days so it gets really thick, because I like very thick CA when I'm putting it on my blanks here. So here again, we're going to take a paper towel, same fold that we did before, and we're going to put a little dot on here. Turn on our lathe, put a little dot on here about half the size of a dime. There you go. And we're going to smooth it across the blank. Don't stay on too long because it sets up and your paper stuck to the blank. Turn it around there. Give it a shot of accelerator. Do it again. On this, you want to put three to five coats. People do this with uh, postage stamps that are glued to a blank and do this. It's pretty much the same thing, only you're going to put a lot of coats on there to build it up past where your, your bushings would be. What do we got there? That's uh, four coats so far. I'm going to put the accelerator. One more coat on. Shake it up, give it a little squirt, and we're done applying the CA. Okay. Are you ready? I'm still recording. Oh, okay. Guess I'll just cut that part out. Yeah. All right, now, we put the CA glue on here, and we didn't really pay any attention to where the end of the blank came to and where the bushing started, so. What we've actually done here is we have we have a solid stream of glue all the way across bushings, blank, the whole nine yards. Now if I tried to pull this off here right now, I could probably get the bushing out of there, but what we're going to do is end up breaking the, uh, uh, the CA on the ends of the blanks. I don't want to do that. So what I'll do is I put my tool rest back over here again. I want to lower it down a little bit so I get a better angle on it. Turn the lathe on, turn the speed all the way back up. And this time we're going to do, we're going to use the toe of this chisel as a scraper and we're going to cut the glue between our blank and the bushing on both sides. So I'll set it up there just very carefully, kind of eyeball it, see where the end of it is. Just barely touch it, you see it come off there and then I roll away from it. Same thing on the other end. Barely touch that line and roll away from it. Now that glue has been cut. I have a nice smooth cut line on both ends of the blank. All right, Abernet, please. Now we're going to use our Abernet. So I use 400 uh, grit Abernet. Turn the lathe down as slow as it'll go. Turn it on. And I just kind of use a little circular motion here. Keep it moving. Don't stop in one place and try to, uh, to get out a rough spot. Let the whole thing kind of smooth out on its own. And I'll just keep going like that for a few seconds. And then when I turn this off, I, what I want to do, first is I'm going to get my sand marks out. So I'm going to sand with the grain of the blank back and forth a few times. 
wipe off the dust. Now look at this and make sure that I don't see any shiny spots on there. And cut and run your finger across it back and forth and make sure that you don't feel any high spots or low spots, bumps, uh, what have you. If you find so, you'll, you'll know it's there and you'll know that you need to get back after it with the Abernet again. But make sure you don't have any shiny spots. Shiny spots mean that you didn't sand it. All right, now, micromesh, please. We're going to start with the 1500 micromesh. Like I said, it's pretty much about the same grit as the 400 grit Abernet. However, when you finish sanding with the Abernet, and when we finish sanding with this, there is a big difference in the way this blank feels. The, uh, the micromesh will give you a nice, even, uh, much more um, smoother cut. Here again, we set it off. We sand with the blank. There you go, wipe off the dust. And if you, if you can feel this, it's just as smooth as it could be. Um, but we're not done. We're going to go all the way through this micro mesh, doing the same thing with each grit. And each grit we do, it's going to get a little shinier, a little smoother. Still, the lathe is as slow as it'll go. No need for speed here. Keep the micro mesh moving. Don't stop. If you stop in one spot trying to, to smooth off just one little area, what happens is this stuff will heat up almost instantly and it will melt and you'll get a black ring around your blank. If you turn your lathe off to do your, your uh, smoothing with the grain and you see that black line around there, then stop where you're at, go back to your micromet or your abernet rather, and start all over again. Get that all cleaned off there. So sand, turn it off, sand with the grain, just like that. I just use my hand, run it across there, and remove the dust. Go to the next piece. It doesn't take very long. Now, the older your micromesh gets, the longer you'll have to do this for each piece. This set I've been using for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. It's probably done 10 or 15 pens with it. So, or 10 or 15 blanks, rather, I should say, not pens. Some pens have two blanks, so. These uh, blanks here now are pretty much about the only ones I ever turn anymore. I do them for Tracy so she can take pictures of them and put them on the website. That's uh, about all I get time to do anymore. So, here we go. Smoothed off. We're at the 3200 now. Once over, sand with the grain, wipe off the dust, and 3600, notice what I'm doing with this, I'm folding it in thirds, and then each, when I do that I fold it in half, that gives me six sides of this stuff to work with. Um, I've been asked about this before about wet sanding these blanks. Uh, I do not recommend wet sanding. The reason being is the water gets down in between the blank and the bushing. It gets soaked up by the blank. The blank swells and it cracks your finish. So do not wet sand these. There we go. We're on to 4,000. Next is 6,000. Notice when I turn off the lathe here, you, uh, it's going to start to look uh, rather shiny now. We've still got two more grits to go. 
know if you can see the reflection of the light on the blank there or not, but it's getting pretty shiny. This is 8,000. Lastly, we have the 12,000 here. You can see this, you know, very, very lightly touch the blank. It doesn't take much for this to melt. And if you melt it, you got to back up three or four grits and start over again. So just barely, barely touch it to the, to the blank. Just kind of almost like you're, you're blowing dust off of a countertop or something. Just kind of flop it on there. There you go. Finish polishing. And you can see, let me take this thing out of here now. And you can see it's, I don't know if you can see the shine on that. Can you see it? Yep. And that's our blank. We're ready to go put our pen together. So that's pretty much all there is that's in, in, a, in a nutshell on how to do an inlay blank. Uh, I know I'm going to get all kinds of feedback from other people saying, well, this is how I do it, and I've seen it done this way, and how come you didn't do this, but this is just my way of doing it. To me, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. Um, it's, it's, it's almost foolproof. So, uh, if you have any questions on how to do this yourself, you can uh, give us a call at 1-800-820-1099. And ask for Tim, who me, I can go through the whole process for you over the phone if you want. Uh, Tracy knows how to do this. She's done it many times. You can ask her. Uh, and just want you to be happy with our product. And we will show you how to do it. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day.